sisters, welcome to our today's program. We are going to talk about the insecurity in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, particularly in Ituri. We have started with Ituri, and this is the second part of Ituri before we move on to South Kivu. Welcome once again to our program, and my name is Odon Bulamba. I'm going to introduce this program to you and we are going to spend some time together talking about uh, what has been happening in that part of uh, Congo and this is a part of the report from the United Nations this year talking about insecurity in the eastern part of uh, Congo. Let's start by telling you that uh, there are different factions that have been operating in the eastern part of the Congo, we have already talked about two or three, and today we are going to talk about the remaining three. Let's start with the patriotic and integrationist force of Congo. Before we move on, let me remind you that if this is your first time to watch our programs we are inviting you to subscribe share our videos and do not forget to click on like once again thank you for the trust that you have given to us operations area and use of children for the patriotic and the integrationist force of congo the Patriotic and Integrationist Force of Congo, FPIC, mostly belonging to the Bira community, continued to be one of the most active armed group in Irimu territory, with its armed activities intensifying against the security forces of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and civilians in the outskirts of Bunia from January 2021. This exacerbated tensions among the population of Bunia and the triggered FRDC, meaning that the Army of the Congo, operations. The structure of the FPIC, or again a CIPF, continued to lack clarity. Several sources cited former 2018 presidential candidate Rajabo Tabahbo Suborabo of the Congolese Political Party United for change as the group's founder. The FPIC included several women and used teenagers 15 years of age and older as combatants. Some FPIC fighters were previously artisanal diggers and continued to dig gold for their livelihoods. Although FPIC did not use gold to finance their movement during the reporting period. But for local and mining authorities noted that members of the Bira community were digging gold often around Andisoma, Mobala, Babailebe, Nyankunde, Vututu, and along the Talalo River, and that FPIC fighters were digging in these areas alongside the population. As a result of the insecurity, semi-industrial mining operations on the Shari River, less than two kilometers outside the Rimu, ceased in 2020. Let's talk about the attacks and reprisal against civilians. Beginning in May 
2020, FPIC carried out several deadly attacks in Irimu territory, targeting security forces in the DRC and mainly non-Bira civilians, particularly EMA, resulting in a forced displacement. On 20th of October 2020, the FPIC attacked the town of Irimu and set fire to the territory's administrative office and police station. Two PNC, or again two police agents, two FPIC combatants, three Congolese army members, two women and a child were killed during the attack. A woman raped by two fighters identified the FPIC fighter who had ordered her rape. The city of Irimu was still virtually emptied of its population at the end of January 2021. The attack was preceded by a series of incidents between the Bira and the Hema. The FPIC obtained some of its armaments during attacks against the Congolese army and the Congolese police, particularly in Marabo on the 4th of May 2020 and in the town of Irimu. It's not certain that there is coalition between FPIC and ALC, Codeco, the Bon Temple group and FRP dissidents. Bira civilians who did not support the FPIC were considered traitors and risked reprisal. At the end of October 2020, the FPIC had killed a Bira actor of several society who had condemned the activities of FPIC around Mwenga Kunda Walu Exis. Let us talk a little bit about the Zaire group. This is a second group. We'll start with the areas of oppression for the Zaire group. And we're also going to talk about the armed clashes with FPIC and Kodeko factions and attack or attacks on civilians. The Zaire self-defense group, mostly belonging to the Hema community, has deliberately maintained a low public profile and remained secret about its organization and structure, despite the intensification of its armed activities, including abuses against civilians in the territory of Jugu and uh, Irimu. The Zaire group maintained strongholds in Suata and Shari in Irimu territory and Dala, Bijo and Dego in Jugu territory where group's leaders Zawadi was based. This group blocked access to the areas of land for Lendu and Bira civilians who could not get there without putting their lives at risk. For instance, two Bira, a man and his son, fled Dala after element of the Zaire group, killed his Lendu employee and threatened to kill them both. The Zaire group continued to verify people's ethnic origin and imposed taxes at checkpoint. Knights, armed patrols of the Zai group in Iga Barrier and Nizi in Jugu territory during the year 2020 have been decried. Element of Zaire group carried machetes 
and an increasing number of AK-type assault rifles. The Zaire group participated in armed clashes with the, the FPIC and Kodeko factions. On 15th and 16th March 2021, elements of the Zaire group and URDPC Kodeko combatants fought in Chile group where is uh, Chile is in Jew territory during violent clashes in which the Congolese army also participated resulting in a population displacement and the death of nine civilians according to a former element of the Zaire group and uh, the Congolese uh, uh, branch for intelligence as well as monesco sources a hammer source also started that element of the zaire group came from sota to fight the fpic during the 20 of october 2020 attack on the city of Irimu. Those elements of the Zaire group began attacking the Congolese army and the national police, as well as Bira and uh, Lendu civilians. Let us talk uh, about uh, gold. During the reporting period, elements of the Zaire group mined gold and protected gold mines, including around those around Dala, Mabanga, Nizi, and Iga Barrier, we are in Jugu territory, and around Bazakala, Babelebe, and Batale in Boboa Bokowe, in Irimu territory. Three people with knowledge of the case confirmed that Zawadi, the leader of the Zaire group, was artisanal gold miner who controlled the Nyaka mine in Dego Group in Jugu territory, located at 20 kilometers from Dala. The Zaire Group defended Willy Willy, a large mine with more than 20 mechanized excavators near Mabanga. We are in Jugu territory during the Kodeko attack on March 15th, 2021. The sites whose, among, whose amount of gold production, production was not, excuse me, the site whose am, amount of gold production was not known to mining authorities belonged to Mambo Kamaragi, also known as uh, Rolf. Young Hema had protected the Kamaragi Mining Cooperative, which also is known as Komisara. And they have protected it alongside 10 to 20 Congolese soldiers. Let's talk a little bit about abuses against members of the community of civilians, abuses which were done by the Congolese army and the Congolese police in Jugu and Irimu territories. Members of the security of the DRC deployed in the territories of Irimu and Jugu have committed abuses, including conflict-related sexual violence, in particular against the Bira and Lendu populations, considered to be affiliated with FPIC or Kodeko factions, respectively. Some of these facts, some of these acts may constitute war crime and are punishable under the provisions of paragraph 7 E 
of Security Council Resolution 2293 of 2016 as renewed in its Resolution 2528 of 2020. During operations against Kodeko factions in land groups in Nyupa, Linga, Buba, Dendo, and Laujo Walendupitsi, from March at least until the end of June 2020, the Congolese army, including the 3,308th and 3,201st Regiment of the 2nd Battalion systematically destroyed and looted homes, medical centers, and school, emptied land villages of their inhabitants, and prevented, prevented the delivery of any humanitarian aid. The violence culminated in the execution of 13 Lendu civilians in Gujo, Ngaluza, on June 25, 2020. Similarly, the Congolese army committed abuses during operations against AL, ALC Kodeko from October 24th to mid-November 2020 and thereafter until at least the end of January 2021 in land villages around Ezekere in Walendo Tatsi, where the armed group was unofficially precantoned. The commander of the third defense zone, General Philemon Yav, supervised these operations which included members of the Intervention Commando Battalion as well as the 3308th, 1301st and 3202nd Regiment of the 2nd Battalion. The Congolese army forced residents to flee their homes prevented them from accessing their villages and fields until at least the end of January 2021 and blocked access to humanitarian aid for weeks. Several land women who had tried to return to their villages and fields were victims of sexual violence. On her return to Ezekere, while being arrested by eight Congolese army members, a 70-year-old woman was severely beaten up and striped naked, naked, touched in the chest and subjected to attempted rape after confirming that she was a Lendu. Four women were raped by the Congolese army members in two separate incidents between November and December 2020 as they returned to their respective villages, Kambutso and Ladile, to look for food. Two were released after giving money to their two rapists. The Congolese army members had shot at civilians fleeing hostilities and killed several. In October or November 2020, two different sources witnessed summary executions of two 60-year-old women from their families by Congolese army member entering Kambutso in two separate incidents. In the account, witnesses consistently mentioned the systematic looting of people's property and the partial destruction of their homes and health centers by the Congolese army members. General Yave said he was not aware of such acts 
and that holds check with his subordinate. Since at least October 2020, members of uh, the Congolese army and the national police have arbitrarily arrested or ill-treated Lendu Obira men suspected of being affiliated with Kodeko or FPIC in the expanded Bunya area and Irimu territory. One Lendu said he has a uh, one Lendu said him and three other Lendus were beaten in Ladile just before the operations in Ezekere by two Congolese uh, soldiers after saying they did not uh, know where us of the rebels camp. Members of the police, national police and the uh, Congolese army carried out mass arrests in Kotomi and Lengabu, including minors in December 2020 and January 2021, respectively. Several of those arrested were ill-treated and had to pay money in exchange for their release. It is concerned that repeated abuses by some members of the security forces will only increase the distrust of the Lendu and Bira populations toward the security forces in general, increase tensions and encourage membership in armed groups. Let's talk about another different groups. And here we are going to talk about the Ituri Patriotic Resistance Front. Since the signing of the peace agreement of the 28th of February 2020 and the disarmament and demobilization of the 31st FRPI combatant on 31st of October 2020, the disarmament, mobilization, reintegration process of the FRPI has been in locked down. On November 29, 2020, FRPI leaders signed resolutions with the presidential delegation in which the FRPI declared, declared its readiness to continue the disarmament process, stating that it could not bring together by 31st of December 2020 its dispersed fighters, requesting more time to do so, as well as the payment of a single month instead of the nine months of unpaid arrears and a meeting with the participation of all parties in the process in order to discuss the modalities for moving forward and a timetable. On March 8, 2021, FRPI chiefs, including the chief of staff, the General Mbadu Adirodu Richard, told the panel that they continued to demand the release of all prisoners, all their prisoners, and their number is 144, as well as their integration into the Congolese army, although individual assessment were required in some cases. A decision on amnesty by the National Assembly, as provided in the peace agreement, and the resumption of support to combatants at Camp Getty. This request remained, to now this request still remaining outstanding. During a meeting on March 20th, 2021 or 21, with all stakeholders involved in the disarmament demobilization, reintegration process of the FRPI, 
in which FRPI did not participate, parties acknowledged, acknowledged the importance of the success of the process, assessed the extent to which it had progressed and proposed the establishment of a modified timetable and precise conditions. Since the 30th of September 2020 attack on FRPI and around Getty, the number and scale of security breaches by the FPRI had remained relatively limited despite isolated incidents. On 8 March 2021, the panel passed through the FRPI checkout or checkpoint on the main road between Bunia and Getty in Lorobi, where combatant demanded a tax of 200 Congolese franc from motorcyclists, 1,000 Congolese franc from small vehicles, and 2,000 Congolese franc from uh, trucks. Let's talk now about the illegal presence of members of the Congolese army in the gold mines. It confirmed that the illegal presence of the Congolese army members in seven gold mines in Jugu, Irimu and Mombasa territories. In six of the mines, Local cooperatives mined gold with semi-industrial mining enterprises owned by Chinese individuals or Chinese investors, four of which were attacked by Kodeko factions during the reporting period. The panel confirmed an illegal presence of the Congolese army in the mining sectors operated by Gold Dragon Resources, DRC, managed by Wang Bin, and in the site operated by Kimia Mining Investment Company, managed by Lin Hao, including one, including on a concession owned by MCC Resources and Kong Mauhuai in the Okapi Wildlife Reserve where all mining activity is illegal. More details on those cases and companies, I can send them to you if you want. They are in the book or material from the United Nations. So thank you so much for your time and attention that you have given to us. It was once again, Odon was talking about the insecurity in the eastern part of the Republic, Democratic Republic of the Congo. And we're talking today not about the ADF. We apologize for that mistake on the screen. We're talking about the FP, the FRPCI, who have been fighting and making life of people difficult or again as a patriotic and integrationist force of the Congo PIFC if you want so that was what we are talking about on today once again we say thank you for your attention and if this is your first time you watch our programs please subscribe share our videos with friends and colleagues don't forget to click on a like and we'll see you again next time Thank you for attention. This is the end of the program. I wish to you the best and I wish to you a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, depending where you are. Thank you. Goodbye for now and see you.